Good evening, Jersey City, and welcome to the Wednesday, March 31st joint meeting between the Jersey City Board of Education and the Jersey City Municipal Council. Uh, to start the meeting, I'm going to quickly do a call to order and a roll call of the Board of Education. Then I'm going to turn over to the City Council President to do a call to order for the Jersey City City Council. So I'll begin by doing a call to order of the Jersey City Board of Education. Um, this meeting is being held in conformity with the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4-6. In proper public notice of the meeting was published uh, in, L in the Jersey Journal and LDR La Prenza newspapers and posted on the district's website. Public notice was also given to those persons requesting that such notice be given to them. Okay, we'll do a very quick roll call. Roll call, Trustee Richardson, he's not here. Trustee Velasquez. Here. Trustee Hamilton. Here. Trustee Terrell Page, she's not here as well. Trustee Roman. Yeah. Trustee Vertibello, she's not here as well. Trustee Lyons. Here. Vice President Shaw is here. President Ali. Present. All right. Good. So we have a quorum. Um, Madam, Madam uh, Council President, I'll turn it over. Uh, can we all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? All right, first of all, I just want to thank everyone for convening this meeting. And in particular, I want to thank the city council president um, for taking this opportunity to have a joint collaborative meeting between the Jersey City Board of Education and the city council. Uh, from what I understand, back in history, there used to be these types of meetings when the uh, residents would vote on a school budget uh, because you know the residents would have to determine you know, the funding for the schools and the funding for the city. And I think that it's a historic event for us to be coming together during this funding crisis. And it shows the recognition that our city leaders have in terms of this funding crisis and the fact that we're gonna be working collaboratively to solve this. I just wanna set the tone of this meeting. This meeting is not one for political grandstanding. It is a meeting for understanding. And I am glad that we're all here uh, collectively uh, to be able to work towards that note. Uh, that being said, if there's any other opening remarks that anyone would like to give, any introductions, uh, I'm going to yield the floor for that, um, and then we can get started with our quick presentation. I just want the record to show that Councilman Robinson. Is there any board comment? No? No. All right, so in front of you, there are three sets of documents. Um, you'll see. One looks like this, it says the financial outlook, 2021. The next document uh, is the table. And the third document that you have, uh, it's, a, it's a couple of bar graphs and line graphs. So we're gonna be going through them in that order. So we're gonna start with the financial outlook for 2021, 2022. So this is something that we pulled off from our uh, Board of Education budget presentation and the numbers that I really wanna highlight here uh, for people to really look at is we've talked a lot about this $85 million tax levy uh, that the Board of Education passed in their preliminary budget. If you look at the number in terms of subtotal revenues from state sources, um, about halfway, halfway down the page, you'll see a number about $71 million. And then if you go further down the page and you look at appropriations, you'll see a number that's about $14 million. Collectively, between the aid that we've been cut from the state, which was again, $71 million, and an additional $14 million that we were projected to give to charter schools, 
just between those two line items alone, we lost $85 million in revenue. And again, if that number sounds familiar, that is the number that the Board of Education raised in terms of their tax levy to maintain sustainable funding. Um, Council Lavar, I saw you had a question. I, I'm gonna take questions in a little bit. There's, there's, there's just a lot more I wanna get into. Sure. Sure, so if you look on the financial outlook page, on the, first, on the front page, if you look at these subtotals from the state revenues, it's $71 million. present this document again just for everyone to understand, you know, in terms of a high level budget document, you know, what is it that the Board of Education is facing in terms of a revenue crisis? Now, the next page I want you guys to look at is this table. So if everyone can just turn to this table. This table represents the cuts from S2 that, that have uh, basically rocked our district over the last couple of years. So in 2019, 2020, we lost $27 million in state aid. The subsequent year, we lost an additional $60 million in state aid. This year, that $71 million figure, you know, that's the figure that you just saw on that previous page, that's how much money we just lost from the state this year. These projections are from the Education Law Center. In the next three years, we're looking to be cut 101 million in the 2022-2023 year, 76 million in the 2023-2024 year, and an additional 54 million in the 2024-2025 year. Over the course of the seven years of cuts, the state of New Jersey is asking the Jersey City resident to come up with $391 million. Fundamentally, the state of New Jersey is asking for the, for, the, for the residents of Jersey City to come up with what we believe is an absurd figure in this amount of time. The residents of this city, in our opinion, cannot afford to have a tax levy increased, you know, $85 million this year, another $100 million what we're looking at the next year, another $76 million the subsequent year, and another $54 million the subsequent year. But I, wanna, but I wanna start this conversation by really talking about how we got here. How is it that the state of New Jersey believes that the residents of Jersey City can afford this sort of tax increase? How is it that they've been able to cut all this funding and somehow uh, you know, seemingly gotten away with it? So this whole conversation starts, uh, if you move to the next page. This whole conversation began in 2009. In 2009, 2010. In 2009, 2010, that was the year when Chris Christie passed a new legislation in terms of state taxes. And he put a cap on how much tax the schools could raise. And he said that every year, the schools could raise a maximum of 2%. 2%, but that was 2% of the local levy. What that meant for our school board was we had a budget that was approximately $600 million. Every year, we could only raise taxes a maximum of $2 million. And so fundamentally, every year, we faced a $10 million structural deficit. And so what happened as a result of this is if you look at this graph, between 2009 and now, we have underfunded our public schools based on the state formula of adequacy, based on what is defined by the state as what is required to provide a thorough and efficient education to our students, we have not done that for 13 years. And I wanna put that into context. The students who are graduating this year, the class of 2021, from kindergarten to 12th grade, have never had fully funded Jersey City Public Schools. We have, you know, as adults in the room, we have failed them for the last 13 years. They have never gotten the opportunity or the chance to have the same level of education as their counterparts across the state. Now, as you can see, the last year in 2019, 2020, 
was the first time that we took a step to actually increase you know, the amount of funding uh, towards adequacy. And we increased taxes by about $53 million. Now the question becomes, what happens in this next year? Do we fund our schools fully? Or do we leave our schools underfunded yet again? Okay, if you guys can move to the next page. So this again highlights the disparity uh, between the state's position and our local position. 2021, as you guys can see, 2020-2021, the state aid that is being given to the Jersey City Public Schools is $324 million. The state believes, based on their formula, they should only be giving us $139 million. In other words, the state still believes there's $200 million that they can take away. And in addition to that, if you look at our local revenue, the Jersey City, the Jersey City school tax levy, it claims is $332 million below its local fair share. Now, local fair share is calculated based on your rateables and based on your, your, uh, your average income of your community. So based on the state's formula, they believe that we can come up with $522 million locally, whereas our local levy at this point is only $189 million. And if you look to the right, um, you know, so if you look at local revenue and you look at the line graph that we have, so again, just, just for context for people who are, who are following, this line graph here, this, is, this was the fundamental problem that we faced. Between 2009 and 2019, those numbers barely moved. We had a tax levy that was $86 million. And again, we were only given the opportunity to increase taxes by 2%, which was approximately you know, $4 million per year once we got to $100 million. So over the last 10 years, 13 years, we have not been able to raise taxes at the level to sustain our schools. And now the state is asking us to come up with all of this money, about 332 million of it, in the next four years. And that is the fundamental crisis that we face. If you go to the next slide. One of the things that I think all of us need to be grounded in, and uh, it, I mean, it just needs to be said for the record, is that fundamentally the taxes in Jersey City are much lower than the taxes around the state. I know that there's homeowners out there that don't want to hear that. I know there's a lot of people who have talked about how expensive this town is, and, and I can reconcile with that. I mean, most recently, Jersey City was ranked as, you know, one of the places with the fifth highest rent in the entire country. But at the same time, if you look at our property taxes and compare it to the rest of the state, we are, we are significantly under taxing as compared to the rest of the state. But this also has to do with how is our property tax allocated? So if you look on the right-hand side, the average state property tax, about 53% goes to schools, 30% goes to the city, and 18% goes towards the county. However, in Jersey City, as of last year, 46% of our local taxes went towards our, our, our municipality, 27% towards our schools, and 27% towards our county. Now if you go to the next page, this is what I was talking about in terms of the property taxes and the school taxes. So as you'll notice on this paper, we have Jersey City, Newark, Maplewood, Edison, and the New Jersey State Average. The average school tax rate in New Jersey is 1.2%. The average school tax rate in Jersey City is less than 0.4%. And if you look at overall taxes, many of us try to uh, compare us to our sister city in Newark. In Newark, the, the equalized property tax rate altogether, if you put together the city the schools and the county is more than 3%. In Jersey City, it's less than half of that. Fundamentally, Jersey City as a city can afford to put more money in. But the question is, how are we gonna do this sustainably and in a way that doesn't hurt homeowners? So I just wanna move on to the, the last piece. Now we're, up, we're now we're up to the uh, the last the last part of uh, the slide deck, which um, should look like this for those of you guys that are following. Okay. If you look at the local fair share factors, this is something I was discussing earlier. 
Remember, the state of New Jersey says that we can contribute up to $522 million. The reason they say that is you look at our rateables in terms of equalized value and you look at our income. Jersey City's rateables have gone from $20 billion to over $40 billion. That fundamental difference has, has caused the state to look at the formula in terms of our city and say that we can contribute more uh, towards our schools. If you look on the next page, I really want to highlight here, you know, many people have asked the question in terms of the school spending over the last couple of years. Um, and I want to highlight here this line graph. Since 2008 and 2009, the district's adequacy budget, this is the state formula for how much money we should have in our schools, has increased by 31%. Our revenue has increased by 1%. I think it's fairly obvious that over the last 13 years, if you're only gonna increase your revenue by 1% every single year, you are going to have systematic problems in your schools. And let's see, on the next page, this number of 324 million, we already discussed this previously in terms of state aid. Over the next couple of years, there is a potential for that state aid to almost be completely wiped out. So between this year and the subsequent four years that are coming up, we're looking at a potential $324 million hole uh, as the state of New Jersey does not feel that they are required to give this amount of state aid to the schools. Finally, I'm just gonna go to our last page here again. And I just wanna even highlight between 2020 and 2021, the difference. Last year, our local fair share, according to the state of New Jersey, was $474 million. Over the course of one year, that increased to $522 million. That's an increase of $50 million. That means according to the state formula, even if the state had not cut any additional funding, they expect us over the course of one year to come up with $50 million, year over year, to fund our schools. So, that's the, end of, uh, that's the end of these presentations, but I just wanna give some closing remarks just so we're all grounded in terms of next steps and how we can move forward, and then we can open up for an open discussion. Fundamentally, I think that the, the issue that, that we've had here is that for many, many years, you know, I think that people across the board have kind of overlooked school funding. We've been very fortunate in Jersey City uh, to be in a position where the state has contributed a lot of dollars towards our schools. But at this point, we're looking at a situation where, you know, the funding from the state level is going to dry up. Whether it dries up in the next four years, whether it dries up in the next 10 years, fundamentally, the revenues towards our schools need to increase. And I think that the, the reason that we wanted to have this meeting, and, I, and, I'm, and again, I'm very gracious to the city council for being here, is to understand as city leaders, this is a task that we will be faced with in determining the future of our city. The future of our city really lies in our schools. And uh, in, in my opinion, we cannot afford uh, to wait any longer. So that's the end of my presentation. Um, I'll take any questions and uh, an open discussion. And again, I wanna thank the council president for giving me this opportunity. I just want the record to show that Councilwoman Denise Ridley is here and also Councilman Youssef Saleh. And if anybody have any Thank you. Um, you just speak and it come on. Okay. Um, could you explain the the way the state formula is set up? You said that the state for, the state has cut, and they said by their formula they I uh, think it went from three hundred and twenty four million to one thirty nine. But could you tell us like what's the, what d does the state formula? say like, okay, X amount of dollars for salary, X amount of dollars for lunches, X amount of dollars. Could you just give me a, a brief background? Because I don't know if I'm speaking for anybody else. I don't really know how the state formula, you know. So the state has a determination on something that they consider a thorough and efficient education. And that's what's considered an adequacy level of funding. Now that adequacy level of funding is sort of a black box, but it's determined by looking at the amount of weighted enrollment that you have and multiplying it. So if you look back on this page, um, this, is the, uh, this is the one that starts with all the bar graphs. So our enrollment figures 
are actually multiplied by, there's a weight for certain kids who get free and reduced lunch. There's a weight for certain kids who are English language learners. There's a weight for certain kids who are special education learners. They combine all those numbers together. There's a certain amount of dollars that they ascribe per student, and that is what determines your adequacy budget. So you take you know, how many students you have enrolled, then you have additional factors for certain students, and all together, that is the number that is supposed to provide you an adequate budget. And that is a, that is a state figure. Again, the state has not met that obligation um, and that's part of ongoing litigation that we have as well is, you know, for the past 13 years when they took control, they didn't fund our schools. And, you know, now they're leaving, trying to give us back local control. And while they're leaving, they're like, here's a present. Go come up with $300 million over the next three years. Sorry, that's a great question, actually, and I should I should have addressed that. So this is and this is how this whole state S two thing kind of like got in over our heads. So when the payroll tax was passed initially, if you guys remember, and again I want to thank you for your courage on passing the payroll tax. Part of the payroll tax was supposed to cover these cuts. As S two came down, the payroll tax was supposed to provide a cushion so that we could raise additional funding and be able to fund our schools. What ended up happening is, in the legislation, it was written that you know, as the numbers change, as the rateables change, the amount of state aid will also change. However, what was presented to us by the Office of Legislative Services was a static number. So as, as, uh, as Councilman Lavara mentioned, we were told we would be cut 200 million over seven years. But the legislation actually said that as your rateables change every year, the amount of state aid that is required will also change. And so that's why if you, if you recall, you know, if you go back here to our rateables, and you see this, this uptick, every year that we increase our rateables by 10%, 12%, that number from 170 million has now ballooned into $391 million. And so that's how, that's how that figure was calculated by the state. This is more just a question for clarity as it I believe that was a Chris Christie initiative throughout the entire state. Um, however, again, as an Abbott district, the, the real difficult part for us was our local levy was already so low, right? So that 2% really made it tougher on us because, you know, even with the 2%, it, it really didn't do much for us in terms of revenue, right? I mean, you've seen our revenue numbers over the last couple of years, I mean, have been static. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing our district operates given how much we've had to cut over the last couple of years. So at this point, what state officials have the board met with on this issue and what's the status of the litigation? So the, the litigation, I don't know how much I can comment on that. Um, but in terms of state officials, I mean, we've been, you know, we've been meeting, um, you know, I've met with uh, Assemblyman Mukherjee, I've met with uh, Senator Stack about this. You know, we've, we've been trying to have ongoing conversations. Again, the, the, the thing that I think is really important for all of us in this room to really focus in on is that this, I mean, this is 2021, it's an election year for the whole state. And I think this is the year that we have the most leverage. I mean, you see the numbers. If we don't tackle this this year, I mean, again, we're talking about 100 million next year, 76 million the subsequent year, and 54 million the year after that. I, I really don't see, you know, as much as people can say, look, how much can the schools cut? I really don't see a way out unless we really get some state action going in the next, in the next couple of months, really. Okay, so, so throughout the state, but if the, the municipality wanted to change it, it could be done through referendum? Is that what?
microphone so we can hear you. There you go. Thanks. Oh, With the wow. red light on it, it's, it's it. actually uh, projecting. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Um, so is um, the formula, the, the state aid formula and the local fair share formulas, are those being challenged as part of the lawsuit? So in our litigation, the thing that we're really challenging is the, uh, the discrepancy in the gap for S2, directly challenging the S2 legislation, not necessarily challenging the SFRA, which is the School Funding Reform Act, which puts this um, on. Sorry, this is a practical matter. I'm just someone texted that the, the feed is not working, so they're trying to follow on Facebook. They're not able to, uh, so it's breaking up. Facebook is frozen. Yeah, I keep getting text. A substantive question. Uh, I just want to make make clear. I'm correctly interpreting the uh, financial outlook 2122, uh, specifically the the portion related to the city's payroll tax. So it lists the payroll tax at the 86 million dollar number, um, and it is my understanding that the the full administration has certified the payroll tax for 65 million. Um, so I just want to make sure that I understand those two numbers and, and what's in your budget and what the administration has said. Uh, at this point, the Board of Education's position was to keep the payroll tax at 86 million uh, so as to reduce the impact on homeowners. I mean, if we reduce it to 65 million, I mean, you're talking about a $100 million potential levy. So. Yeah, I just want to make sure that was clear and my understanding was right. Um, I think uh, just as a, a maybe a, a broader policy point for future discussion, and I see the subcommittee concept ideas on the agenda, you know, we don't know what the future of the commercial waterfront is going to be that was supposed to fund a good portion of the payroll tax. Uh, we obviously just, we just don't know, right? Remote work, we don't know what that's going to look like. Uh, so it strikes me that, you know, we both as a council and as a board of education uh, can work together to come up with additional revenue raisers that don't fall on the backs of taxpayers, uh, but potentially uh, you know, actually provide, you know, sort of good taxes, if you will, that have been discussed, you know, taxes like a cigarette tax or a, a alcohol tax that actually ends up helping a community and a population. Uh, and I think I would be very interested in working with, with a group to come up with what are the things we can go to the state legislature with to say, here, give us the tools to fund our schools, but not, you know, financially kill our taxpayers and our, kill our homeowners. I was going to say the, the problem is, you know, twofold. It's, you know, on the city level. We do have, you know, tax rateables that could be contributing, uh, but obviously for 30 years we tried to uh, put economic progress of the city because if you, Jersey City is completely different from where it was 30 years ago. And, you know, to a certain extent we needed the economic progress to move our city forward, but we were also under state control for 30 years. And we have to fight this twofold at the state level you know, uh, we have to go down to the state and say, we need to create a glide path for funding our public schools. And if you're actually gonna uh, start taking away our aid, we need to do it in a methodical manner that isn't going to adversely and specifically impact the public schools. Because if you look at the funding that they cut, they narrowly tailored it to hurt the Jersey City Public School District. There's only a handful of districts that got hurt and Jersey City was the biggest one. Um, and then I, I agree with uh, Councilman Solomon regarding funding sources locally. You know, we as a council should be looking at recreational cannabis and passing that as soon as possible, um, sort of um, creating the framework for how we're going to tax it and at the distributor level, at the uh, sales level, and at the, uh, th there's multiple levels that you could tax it at that the state allowed us. So we need to work on that. We need to work on this glide path with the state. And this is our only moment right now to unite. And you know, it is an election year. So that is front and center in mind. Like you can't come get votes from our area, you know, and then meanwhile, hurt majority black and brown district of students. And if you look across New Jersey, and I've said this over and over again, they've run studies on this in for New Jersey specifically, that there is educational apartheid. 
that there are 590 school districts and most of them are segregated, okay? Most of them are majority white. And then you have the black and brown districts. They're the ones getting adversely impacted. And we have, we're probably the largest city and we have mostly immigrant populations, black and brown populations that, you know, for, for 30 years we limped by. Yes, the state funded us, but guess who approved the budget? The state, the state, anytime you wanted to fix anything, approve a budget, it went to the state. And you know, it's nice that we got local control back, but they have to give us the funding necessary and they have to, they have to work with us if they're gonna cut our funding this much to the bone. So generations of students, you know, and families are at stake. And the thing we have to realize in this state is that it costs more to incarcerate someone or give them public uh, welfare than it does to educate them. Even if you spend $25,000 to educate a student, it costs $60,000 per year to incarcerate someone. And then that's in addition to, that's not in addition to all the social services you have to give. So inequality in one area of New Jersey adversely impacts the rest of New Jersey. So you either pay for it now or you're gonna pay for it later, but we have to choose and we have to make sure the governor you know, knows this. Thank you. We just talked. Sorry about that. We got My apologies. Yeah. Um, so to the final slide in the deck, uh, you pointed out that the change in local fair share from 2020 to 2021 um, increased by almost 40 million. Um, yeah, so, so that change is because of our rateables going up 10%. Right, so our rateables went from 36 billion to 40 billion, and that changing result in that rateable resulted in the state formula saying that we can contribute now an additional 50 million dollars to our public schools. I think fundamentally, you know, and I think this goes back to uh, Councilman Sally's point, you know, we we have to get to a position with the state where we can have a sustainable way of funding our schools for the next couple of years. This is not a one year problem, this is not a two year problem. This is a problem we're gonna have to solve in the long term, but we can't have figures that keep changing on us. The payroll tax number, for instance, if one year it's 86 million, then one year it's 100 million, and then one year it's 65 million, how are our schools be able, gonna be able to project a real budget on that? And beyond that, when we talk about these state aid numbers, if one year our rateables went up 10%, and then one year they went up 12%, you know, that's also an additional change in our state revenue. Because again, the numbers I gave you in the table, those are just projections of what could happen. Depending on how our rateables increase in the next year, instead of a $100 million cut next year, it could be a $120 million cut next year. We just don't know. And I think fundamentally what we need to do is, you know, at the state level, we need to have an advocacy plan that combines the powers of the Board of Education and the powers of the city council and says, listen, like we are not gonna stand for having our kids being stuck in the middle constantly. I mean, we're stuck in the middle of, you know, I don't know what kind of, uh, you know, sort of gripe the state has against the Jersey City public school kids, but our kids every year don't have a real budget. I mean, I, I, and I reflect with my board trustees, you know, we had, a, we had a planning meeting. We were trying to do a five-year plan for our district. Do you know how impossible it is for us to do a five-year plan for our district? Because we don't know how we're gonna survive the next year. We fundamentally don't know how are we gonna get the revenues for the next year? How are we possibly supposed to tell these kids in five years, your schools are going to have X? Or in five years, we can invade, make an investment for X, right? And, and so this is why I think, you know, it's so important for us to all be here uh, sort of sounding the alarm. And I also just wanna give a chance for my board trustees to also make comments. Uh, I'd like to say something. Look, uh, Musab, both the Board of Education and the, city and the city has to get together more often now and work this problem out. You had mentioned something before about uh, real estate taxes, and they're low here. Many, many people are moving out of Jersey, the whole state of New Jersey, moving down south to North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, because they're tired of paying the taxes. So this, we have to go after the state of New Jersey, and we have to get this solved. And after tonight's meeting, I think we should have several more meetings and work this out. And we, you know, we have, something has to be done.
So that's part of the it's part of the agenda. It's part of the agenda. Uh, but I also I do I do want to defer to my board colleagues as well to also be able to provide comments. Um, I know they've been listening anxiously and also for them to provide some input, anything they want to give to the city council. Good evening, folks. It's uh, first and foremost um, exciting to be here considering the circumstances and to hear from our municipal partners. And we look forward to a conversation. And I think um, everybody kind of harping on the point that there needs to be more um, collaboration between the Board of Ed and the city. So I look forward to that taking shape uh, throughout the coming months. But most importantly, we do need to fully fund our schools and get more money to the children. Yeah, I just want to thank uh, city council members for all being here. I think this is very impressive that this was put together. I really like hearing what I'm hearing, that we should work together on this. We have to. We have to address this as a united body together to really get after the state to figure out what's going on. We need to figure out what problems we can solve on the local level. I mean, I heard some mentions over there about, you know, tobacco tax, liquor tax, and, you know, maybe marijuana, those things. My concern with those are, though, is that they do disproportionately affect the black and brown communities because they're effectively flat taxes. So we got to be careful about that, about how we do. We got to be smart about how we do that. So, um, you know, when I look at this graph here, this is the one that really concerns me, the pie chart. Because when you start to look at the actual tax, you know, the way it's distributed in the New Jersey average versus the way we do, schools have been left out on our own local level for a while. And I know the comment was made that Jersey City is much different now than it was 30 years ago. It's grown. Jersey City has grown, no doubt, big time. Schools haven't. And we had on half of us the state saying you can't raise taxes. So there are things we can do in this room on our own, but I think we really do have to let the state know, hey, there's no way we can come back from another 200 plus million dollars over the next four years to make up for the funds that we're going to be lacking. This is absolutely impossible. Um, but I'm just really happy to be here, guys. Thank you so much for, for joining us in this expedition to make sure that we can get this mission accomplished. And I look forward to working with all of you. Through the chair. Councilman Borgiano, I agree, and I'm glad that you guys are here tonight because it shows your, your concern for the kids of Jersey City, all of you showing up here because this is such a huge problem for us. I was going to also address what uh, Trustee Hamilton said about the pie chart. And this is something that is tangible for us to look at and say, how can we change these figures? How can we add more money to the school district and try to get closer to what other schools districts do around us? I mean, we're talking about 50% of what most schools give. And I know the city has done amazing things. I've been here since the mid-80s, and I, I've seen the improvements, and it's, it's, it's become a great place to live, and we do have a lot of people moving, and I think Councilman Borgiano is right. There is a, a lot of people, there are a lot of people leaving the state of New Jersey, but there are a lot of people moving into Jersey City. We're getting a lot of people from across the river, and people are coming here, and one of the biggest concerns they have are the school districts. So this would help all of us, everyone in the city, if we can get more money into our school districts so we can take care of that. We, we've tried doing everything we can and to make sure that we're covering all the bases. We have variables in this city that most other cities do not have. We've identified 44 different languages that are spoken in Jersey City, not including sub-dialects. We have a huge immigrant population. We, one time about three years ago, we got over 100 students that were brought to us from Syria out of a war zone to come into our district that didn't speak English, that were going to PTSD. And we took them when we educated those kids at a huge cost. We have about 4,400 kids who are in special needs program. About 400 kids are educated outside the city at a huge cost. It's not that we're wasting our money. We just have variables that impact our district, which are much more expensive. So if, I think that if we were to look at all the other things and contact the state as one unified group and say, we need your support, but also to look at how much we're getting and think that possibly the, the, the city can say, we need to shift these numbers around a little bit to get more to go into the school district. I know it's, it's, it's a priority for all of us to take care of our kids, and I think this is one way we can look at that. And I thank you all for coming here. And one last comment. Musab, how old are you? Uh, 24. You give me a lot of faith in the youth of America. I appreciate your presentation. You did an amazing job. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Lyons. Trustee Roman? It's good to see all of you here tonight. It's, um, this is a very difficult time for our board, I think the first thing before we even begin to think about what we can do is we have to come to some kind of an agreement 
that the children of our city are the responsibility of all of us, not just the people on the school board. We are volunteers who work to help the children of the city. We come to, the, we come to our meetings and we work on things. A, a couple of years ago, they gave, the state gave us the amount they were going to cut. In the middle of all of that, they changed it and said, no, we're going to cut more. How do you operate from year to year when you don't even know what's being taken away from you? And I don't know that it was mentioned here tonight, but more than 80% of our budget it goes for contractual services. And those things go up every year. But every year, they take money away from us. That is absolutely ludicrous. How does everyone, and you can't, there's nothing more to cut. And we're starting to cut things that children really need in order to be able to survive and to do a good job. Our job is to try to educate them so that they can compete in this world. But you can't do that if you don't have the funds. And I, and I want to say something else to you about the kids in the district, too. Everybody talks about um, the fact that they're black or brown. You know what? That really doesn't mean anything. And I want to tell you why. There are kids down in South Jersey who are not black children or brown children. Well, maybe they consider them that. They're Mexican kids. And they're brown, yes. And they're having, they are having the same kind of difficulty in those school districts that other urban school districts have because it isn't their color. It's poverty. And what, what education does to people is it helps them to pull them out of poverty. That's why it's so important in this city for us to get together to do that. Look, the state of New Jersey decided that you have $522 million that you should be giving us. And it should be coming from the city. Maybe not, not all at once, but now they're starting to pull it so that we have to start looking at more of it. Do you think any of us wanted to, to do this budget this year? Because we're taxpayers too. That $1,000 that people keep talking about, we're gonna have to pay it as well. So it doesn't go toward our interest to raise taxes. It's just something that we cannot do. Where are the sources for us to go for the money? Go to the state. The state says, no, we're taking money away from you. We go to the city. The city says, no, we're not going to do it. And then everyone is angry because we have to raise taxes. Where else is there to go? We don't have an opportunity to be able to say, we can go out and bond. We can go out and do it. We can't do that. And so there is no place for us to go but to go to the taxpayer. And it's the last thing we want to do. For the first few years when they put this whole thing out, we didn't take any money. But then it became unsustainable. We couldn't do anything but to, to look at the taxes because no one else wanted to help on either side, the state or the city. Aside from giving us what's, what's legally ours from the tax levy, Nothing else was coming. So there are a couple of questions I want to ask all of you. Does anybody know exactly how much money is in the payroll tax? How much are we actually collecting? I understand they're doing an audit now. We have never gotten that figure. We don't know what it is. The second thing is, you have abatements that are, we, we started them when I was in office, that's more than 30 years ago, and there are, there are a number of them, I don't know, maybe close to 100 of them. But when we were doing our audit, we had a forensic audit done, and the audit said that we were going to, um, um, that they were going to look at some of your abatements. So they got from the city, they got information and asked for 20 of abatements within a certain, you know, that were in a certain period of time for their abatement. And when they came, when the auditors came to us, they said, there's a problem here and we think that the city should do an audit because we don't think that they have collected all of the money 
that they were supposed to collect from those abatements. Now, the, the, your, your, your district, your city did, the city did an audit. Do any of you know how, what, what the results of that are and what, what came out of that? Those are questions that we should be asking in order to be able to see where the sources of funding are. And then we should be looking at what other things we can do. We need to talk to the other representatives because they are responsible for the children of our school district as well. We all are. Every citizen, I think, in this city is responsible. You know, it's so much easier to, as Mr. Sully said, it's easier to, to educate a child because much more positive things come out of that. Kids who get an education, they don't go out and buy guns. They go out and buy cars and they buy houses and they go and have vacations and they live like the rest of us. And the children in our district, after having taught in this district for 32 years, the children in this district are pretty smart kids. They just don't have the background when they come into school. And we need to try to give them that. And we are working on some of those plans now. But first, we have to agree, all of us, that these kids are our responsibility and that the future of the city is with the education of our children. If we can do that, then I think all the problems, we can solve those problems. And then we have to know where the sources of funding are. I don't like that the city says, you, that the state says you have $522 million. The city seems to say that they don't have it. So who's correct? I know the state sees all of your budgets, so they must see something. Yet there are several other th places where you get money. I remember when I was in the city, sometimes we had to take money from the, um, the agencies that we had. And they had a lot of money. Do they have money? Could we all agree that there is money in the city? If there isn't, then we need to be able to talk about other things that we should do. And we need to be able to bring in our, our, our legislators from the, the state of New Jersey our people to be able to talk to them as well. Thank you, Trustee Roman. Trustee Velasquez? Yes, can you hear me? Is this I should be able to speak. Okay, first of all, uh, I do want to thank you for um, agreeing to meet with us today. Um, this, this meeting is way overdue. Um, I think only together can we solve this issue, an issue that's not our issue. It's an issue that's our issue, the city's issue. I agree with um, Councilman Bojano when he was saying that we are losing people in, um, in Jersey City, they're moving out. And someone said, no, they're not. Well, you know the people that are moving out of Jersey City? Till first, till kinder, pre-K and kinder. We have the greatest pre-K and kinder um, program, one of the greatest in the state. So they have no issue with that one. They stay. But as their kids continue to uh, grow um, in the academic grades, then the parents are saying, wait a minute, unless my child can go to McNair, like our president, I'm not staying here. So we need to, if we really want Jersey City to succeed, success comes from the children. Again, um, I believe it was Councilman Saleh that um, you were saying something with regards to if we don't pay for them now, we'll pay for them later. I would rather, and I know all of you, would rather have a, a person that can see you at the hospital and help you with your ailments than a person that will 
hurt you at the corner. So where are we in this city? What do we do with all of our children from downtown to the south? We need to make sure that they have um, equitable education. We have the best of teachers, but what we need is assistance financially so that we can give them the resources and the support necessary to bring successes like that of our president. So um, I urge that we continue these meetings until we can solve this issue. Right now, this is more of an informative setting and it was great. And again, I am so, so, I feel so great to be working with you because that's what we're supposed to do. It's not about the board, it's not about the city, it's about collectively working towards the improvement of Jersey City together. And who improves? We improve from the bottom, our children. Thank you again. And as I said, this is informative. I really look forward to many others, even when we'll sol we, we solve our problem or our issues, we still need to communicate. That's the best way to address anything. Thank you. Let me just say something. Oh, okay. I can't see the red light here. Okay. Now it's on? Yeah. Okay, we got to get used to the touch. Go off. Yeah. Okay, now you got it? Yeah, you got okay. it. Okay. First of all, I would like to thank the uh, board president for the invite. Um, to come together to discuss this. And first, I would like to thank my colleagues for agreeing because when I picked up the phone and called, nobody disagreed. Everybody wanted to come because so often, I think the council do get a bad rap that um, we don't care about the school. And I don't believe that's not true at all. So I felt like this was important for us to meet together to get an understanding exactly of what's going on because there's a lot of misconception um, out in the uh, public. And so this is just the first step for us to come together to see how we can really work together. Um, I know um, we have um, subcommittees in mind. I think uh, that's a good direction to go in because a lot of this stuff, we're not gonna plow through tonight. It's just not gonna happen because this is like 13, 30 years of problem. And before we even got in office, to be perfectly honest, you know, this problem existed. So um, I know the council's here. Uh, we're here to, to work. We're here to uh, bring our ideas. And um, we're here to make the uh, Jersey City school system uh, a better school system. Uh, it is our kids that's in the school, you know. It's both sides. Some people want us to be apart. Some people don't want us to be apart. But if we all live here, I think we should all get along and put everything on the table. So um, we're here. Uh, we can discuss the subcommittees and we can see how we can um, pretty much work on that. And then from that point on, I think we can build and we can come back to the public as a, a unified body uh, once we know what the subcommittees have to do and the information that they have to bring. And our state legislators, um, some of them are listening tonight. So I know they are eager because they live here too. You know, everybody really want to work together. I, I want that on the record. Everybody really want to work together. So we're here, and so um, you can uh, let us know what subcommittees uh, you have in mind. And if we have any more ideas or suggestions, we, we'll definitely speak up because we really don't have much time. Uh, yeah. Time um, uh, yeah, we'll... we'll The next item on our on our agenda is just the subcommittees. Um, and very quickly, I just do want to read a statement from Trustee Vertibello, who texted me. Um, so she says, <clears throat> uh, Board President, Board of Education Trustees, City Council members, and members of the community, I apologize for not being in attendance tonight as I have not received my vaccination as of yet and do not feel comfortable being in an enclosed space. As you know, I am very concerned about our district and the lack of funding. I would very much like to work with the council to find a solution to this very important issue. I hope we will, I hope we will have more discussions after this meeting takes place. Thank you and have a good night. Trustee Gina Vertabello. Um, 
With that being said, uh, the council president and I uh, discussed three big buckets that we believe would be uh, the most effective way for us to move forward in terms of subcommittees. Um, as you all know, you know, this meeting had to be sunshine. We had to have this formal setting, you know, had to jump through a lot of hoops to get here. Uh, and we wanna be more collaborative and be able to you know, work um, you know, more smoothly together. So there are three big buckets uh, that we believe need to be addressed. The first bucket is legislative. So we're proposing a legislative sub subcommittee this subcommittee primarily, um, you know, it's engaging with elected officials, creating our action plan, creating that plan. Again, you know, as an entire body, we do want to move forward. But of course, there are those of us who, you know, who feel more skilled in this area, who can help us to craft that agenda in terms of the legislative agenda towards the state. The second big bucket is finance. Um, and now this is, this is in relation to, you know, as we look at financial projections, not just in the next month, but in the next couple of years, you know, as I've said, the Board of Education, one of our biggest problems is we can't do a five-year plan right now because we literally, you know, when we look at financial projections, we don't see sustainable forms of revenue. And so we want to work to put together a subcommittee on finance that's looking at financial projections and projecting out how we can have sustainable funding for our schools. And the third big, uh, the third big bucket is operations. Um, and this is just, you know, when we talk about day-to-day -day operations and that transition, you know, between the shared services of the city and the schools, um, you know, when we talk about what does it mean in terms of the day-to-day, -day, how can the city and the schools work together to support one another? Uh, because we believe that, you know, it's crucial for us to be working with one another uh, to move forward. So those are the three subcommittees that we proposed. Um, if there's any additional suggestions. I mean, I'm happy to, to take suggestions, um, but, but I also like to defer to the city council president because I think that those are some good starting points. Maybe that can be a sub under the... Yeah. Also very, very quickly, um, I did receive text messages from Assemblywoman McKnight and um, Assemblyman Mukherjee's office. Listen, the county's the one with the bad Wi-Fi, okay? So, <laughs> it ain't us. <laughs> so if there's any other suggestions, otherwise I think that that's a good mark um, to kind of close out in terms of what we need to do. In ter so the three are legislative, finance, and operations. And again, you know, I'll discuss with my board trustees where they want to be placed, and, you know, the city council can also interface in terms of where they like to go. But I think that's a good... Uh, starting point for you know what we do next. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is just the de determining our next meeting as a body of the whole. Um, so I know that we, we can kind of work on that, but also um, if we want to do closing remarks and then we can do public comment for, for our section. So th thank you to uh, school board president Ali. Uh, trustees uh, for the school board, council president for bringing us all together, um, and to my fellow council members. Uh which is what we are doing. So this is a good start and long overdue, um, but it is the smallest of baby steps towards addressing um, this school funding crisis. Knowing where we are, I can't help but remember where we were. If we hearken back to 2018, after those draconian cuts to state aid were made, I recall advocates coming to City Hall and our council meetings telling us that the past didn't matter to stop the blame game, that City Hall and the BOE needed to come together and solve the crisis. Um, I share that just to remind us and the public that we've already been here. Um, today, but today is substantially worse than it was in 2018. Back in 2018, I said there was a short-term problem and there was a long-term problem. In the short term, back then, we had a 2018-19 school budget that was short on revenues. 
And today we have the same thing for the 2021-22 school budget, leaving the only option for the, the Board of Education to substantially increase the school levy with their latest budget, um, requiring a substantial increase in property taxes if it remains the same um, when it's final adoption. And that's to ensure that the schools are fully funded and all our students receive an equitable education. If you accept the premise that uh, uh, Trustee Roman said that all of our children are our children and that a fully funded adequacy budget is the goal, then there is only one way to alleviate the financial burden on the taxpayer by either substantially reducing the city's levy so as to offset the increases at the school side and or having the city contribute revenues to the Jersey City Public School. For my part, I want to reiterate what I said at that school board meeting. I have my support for a fully funded adequacy school budget. And the question I think that remains for us on our side is whether city government um, is whether this is our budget or priority ultimately. Will city government, will we alleviate the tax increase, the tax burden on city property owners? For my part, I think we have a moral obligation to do so for the 2021-22 school budget. That is the short-term problem before us. Our long-term problem is how do we develop the sustainable funding that the schools re require to provide a quality education for the school years beyond 2022? While I have many ideas around this, I will reserve further comment out of respect for everyone's time tonight. I will only suggest one idea to that end, and that's participatory budgeting. Both the city and the schools, I think, need to strongly consider adopting a joint participatory budgeting process um, that begins with the process of developing the budgets for both institutions and that way of both moving forward. In closing, I want to point to two actionable takeaways that I hope will come out of this meeting as well. First, there seems to be uniform, uniform agreement that the state aid cuts were draconian and unfair. The Jersey City Public Schools have filed a lawsuit. As an act of solidarity, I would urge the city to strongly consider an amicus brief as an intervener on the litigation. We should join in this fight and accept that their fight is our fight. This school funding crisis is our crisis. These school children are our children. This should be more than symbolic. We should put the full force of the government of the second largest city in the state of New Jersey, soon to be the first, and put all of our resources behind that. Lastly, as it pertains to committee meetings um, or other meetings like this one, I want to reiterate my call for these, those meetings to, again, whether they're committees or otherwise, to be fully transparent, open to the public, recorded, putting sunshine on the process. This will keep everyone honest and on their toes and give, give the public the confidence that it won't simply be business as usual because they've seen what's happened over the, that nothing has changed over the past 13 years. Finally, I'll just say thank you again to School Board President Ali, members of the school board, and to the council president and all my colleagues, thank you for all for coming to the table. Um, I hope this will be the first of many that will pr prove transformational for our schools, our children, and their families in our city. I yield the rest of my time. Uh, I just want to, I guess, piggyback off of something council president uh, mentioned and Councilman Lavaro, uh, council president said that sometimes people perceive the city as not caring about the children. And Councilman Lavaro said that, you know, this was a problem that we were discussing back in 2018. And I just want to say at that time, as a council, everyone sitting here did agree that we needed to sit down and we actually reached out to the board and we were denied that sit down. Now, the board makeup has changed since then. So I'm glad that we had this meeting today and that everybody today is willing to work together and I think that this is a good first step. While it might be a small first step, I think it shows that everybody sitting in this room right now cares for our kids and that we're willing to do what we have to do to make sure that they do receive the proper education and that we have the proper funding. So, you know, I think today, today makes me feel good and I just hope that we continue this process and this partnership so that we can get what we need for our children. Thank you to uh, the board president, to members, trustees of the Board of Education, to council president, and to all my colleagues for coming together tonight to sit down in a room, put everything beside us, and move forward. Um, we, you know, 
since 2018, I've been involved in some of the, the meetings that we've had, we've tried to have with the Board of Ed to varying degrees of success. I feel pretty confident that the trustees tonight and the current council can work together to move whatever we need to do to take care of our children. I often say in Jersey City, we fight about the wrong things or we fight with the wrong people. So right now it's time that we stop fighting I think everyone in this room agrees, put it to the side, go to our state partners, look at legislation, look at local ways we can fund, including things like various taxes, as my other council colleagues have said. Sometimes saving 10 cents every single day is a whole All right, uh, tonight is a start, so let's keep it moving, okay, Masab? Masab, I have known you, Marilyn, and Jerry for a long time, and I have a lot of faith in you. The others, I've just met some of you tonight. So I'm will we're willing to work with you. Let's work this out, and please, let's keep it moving. Don't, let's not just say we're here tonight, and that's it. Let's get these programs going, okay, Masab? <laughs> I just want to thank the uh, trustees here today and the city council for organizing this meeting. It's a critical subject that we have to act with urgency with. We have to mobilize as soon as possible because time is of the essence. Um, and it's not just, you know, a funding issue, but when you, when a child loses a year of education, when a child loses even a month or two, that, that, those are formative years of growth that they lose out on. And none of this is our fault, but we inherited this problem and there's no more can, uh, there's no more road for us to, you know, have to kick this can down the road. Like the buck stops with us. We have to mobilize every organization in Jersey City. We have to stop the bleeding immediately in order for us to be successful, we have to go down to the state, stop the bleeding. We have to get the funding sources here and work with the state, work with the Board of Ed to make that glide path forward because the future is in our hands right now. And the deck has always been stacked against the kids of Jersey City. Make no mistake, you know, I consider myself one of the lucky ones. Musab, you know, President Ali, you're one of the lucky ones. And for every one of us that succeeds, you know, there aren't enough resources across this city, even when it was under state control, for everyone to succeed. And that's a damn shame. And we need to change that. And inequality is economically inefficient at the end of the day. And we have to make the state realize that. Thank you. Uh, I'll keep my remarks very brief and just say that I am personally uh, committed to doing the work required uh, to work with the school board and my council colleagues uh, to solve this crisis. I, I just want to say thank you to the trustees, president, uh, madam president. Um, I think this is long overdue. I know myself and Ridley and Prince Harry and Roman and Lyons and the past president, we, we sat down a, a few times to try to work things out. And I think we did accomplish some things, be it though that's probably very small, but I really truly believe that this is what Councilman Solomon said, a start. Um, but what I also truly believe is that we need other leaders in the room with us, right? We need the board of, we need the superintendent, 
We need the mayor. We need the state legislators. We need the BAs. We need those people in, in the room with us to be able to make the, the proper decisions, right? Because if we look at this this map here, right, we all see that it's it, it not right. If, if, if this is absolutely true and correct, this is not right on how we fund our kids. And, you know, I represent the, the part of the city where I think we need help the most. And if we're really going to truly get this right, I think we need other uh, leaders in the room. President Ali, I know you said earlier that you spoke to uh, McCurgy and you spoke to Stack, but we need, you know, Senator Cunningham. We need uh, Assemblywoman McKnight. Uh, we need the 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 the, the border uh, freeholders as well. Well, not freeholders, commissioners, and we need the county exec, right? Because they're in the BAs from all of those different uh, positions. Because if we're going to be taking or moving money from the county over to the school, if we're going to be moving money from the city over to the school, we need the BAs and and the leaders shipped in the room. Uh, I. I I'll be here as many times as you guys want me to be here to sit down at these meetings. But the real decision, well, we are decision makers because we vote, but the decision makers really need to be in a room to kind of explain to us the best way to move funds from one place to the next. I know budget season is coming up really soon, so we need to kind of get in front of this before budget season, but I would just like it if we would be able to invite you know those leaders here i know uh assemblywoman mcknight texted you and said she want to hear what's going on i just think she need to be in here in the room because she is a, a a leader down in trenton as as long as she's elected to represent us and i think having her and others in the room we can really get to the bottom of you know these 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 decisions so thank you again for the trustees and my council colleagues for for taking the time and i'm going to be here as as much as we need to be here to get this right for the children i just want to say that I, um all of them will be in a room at a particular time i, I think this just was the first meeting to to see if we can just work together, come up with some type of agreement. Now, we are quite aware that this is really bigger than us here. You need your state legislature, you need the county, you need everybody at the table. But our first step is to make sure we can work together. Now, those three subcommittees that, you know, we suggest um, is important because out of that should bring, you should be able to reach the assembly person, you should be able to reach the commissioner, those committees should design what is necessary, all right? So everybody's going to be at the table. It's just that we have to be the ones to start this because the truth of the matter is they don't go to the state assembly when there's a problem with the school. They come right to city council when there's a problem with the school. And so because they came to us, I think it's up to us to sit down and see what we can do. We know how this process goes. We know this is really bigger than us. We know the state cut. We know the, for, the uh, formula is not right. But we have to sit down and see how can we tack it financially, operationally, okay, and legislatively. We have to do that as a group to see how. Because when you go to them, you want to make sure you have some type of plan or direction on what you want them to represent us with. So um, I think all that will come in time personally, but I just think we need to start it. And far as the subcommittees go, I believe that, you know, y'all should, we should meet every two weeks. And then after that, we come back as a group and bring the information, you know, what direction we should go in, who we should talk to, you know, should we invite the state assembly to come at this time to explain to us, you know, A, B, C, and D. Um, I think that's the concept on how we should deal with the uh, subcommittee is nine of us. Um, the council, you can email me and let me know what committee you desire to be on. It'll be three, three, three. That, that'll be pretty much the setup. And from there, um, once we know who's on each committee, uh, we will definitely send an email so everyone can meet, set up a, a meeting time or place, however you want to do it, virtually or whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. But um, we need to do it. Okay, we need to move on it. Yeah, and I just want to echo the uh, city council president's remarks. I mean, it's not that we didn't want to invite anyone else. It's that, uh, you know, we agreed that the first step was for all of us to get together. And I think it's, and, and again, I just want to express how happy I am as well that this meeting is happening. In my, in my eyes, I mean, this is historic. You know, we have a historic pr uh, problem before us. And instead of us, you know, you know, sort of fighting each other, 
we're making this commitment to one another to say, listen, we all see this problem that's coming, right? I mean, we, we all see these numbers and we're committed to working to solving this problem. And I'm, you know, and it makes me very hopeful um, that we'll be able to get something accomplished because of all the people here who are committed. So I'm gonna let the board make uh, closing remarks. And uh, after that, the board uh, is gonna have to do a, a public, a public uh, public comment section very briefly, and then we can adjourn. Um, but you know, I'll just let the board do do that part, and then I know the city council members if they have restrictions on their time. So, uh, Trustee Velasquez, you want to start? Actually, um, again, I thank you uh, for for meeting with us. Uh, I, I, I'm excited to hear the commitment in each of your voices, uh, and, and I know that together we're going to move not just uh, the school district, but we'll also help move the city ahead. So I look forward to all of our other meetings. I look forward to the meetings um, that Mr. Robertson was uh It was very good to be here tonight. And I wanna thank you for coming and listening to us and asking your questions. And I hope that it will lead to a, whole great, a great deal more because the stakes are really high. Jersey City has come a long way in the more than 30 years since they gave out the first abatement and we started to look at our waterfront and what our real potential as a city was. And now after all of those years, we have a whole lot of good things going on here. But no city is going to really be the kind of city that is really progressive and has so much going for it if they don't have a population of educated people. Now will we be able to educate everyone so they go to college? It's really not necessary. When we met three years ago when I was running another term for this office, we talked about things we could do. And one of the things I think I should let you know about is we put together a vocational school in public school number 40. I said we were going to move forward and we did. And we have an administration that is willing to do things, that is, is always looking for things. People are, are getting, trying to get ideas and finding out what the core problems are. And we have another program going in very shortly that will try to help our kids who are, who are behind in a way that does it better than remediation does it, that pulls it right into our curriculum. So we are moving ahead and we want to be able to do this. But you can't do, I mean, you don't need a lot of money, but you can't do it with the kind of money we have. It's very difficult. You have to pay people. And if you looked in the newspaper just recently, you saw that 44 school districts in central New Jersey were advertising first in the Star Ledger and then in the Jersey Journal. They take our, we, we have probably one of the best uh, teacher training programs in the state of New Jersey. And they come in and they will get, the, they're, they're starting early, which means they can pull people in earlier than we have, to, than we're able, because our budget is so unstable. We are now having trouble getting teachers. That's what worried me about the Liberty Science Center school. I would love, we would love to have a school like that in our district, no matter who's running it. It's good for our kids. But we need to work together on so many th levels here. And if we start and we start looking at the finance, that will be a good start. The woman was referring to is they're having a job fair. 40 towns came together having a job fair to meet and recruit teachers because there's such a shortage. Even the county schools are having a hard time filling certain spots. Um, uh, President Ali, if you could at the end of this meeting, would you tell people where they can see the video that's going to be shown tonight? There's one thing I want to bring up, and through the meetings that we've had with some of the council people, we have gotten, we have had the benefit of so many shared services through the city, and I just want to point that out tonight. 
you know, we've had, Gina Vertabello is not here, but she really fought to have the trailers taken out of our district, trailers that should not have been there. And she fought and the city stepped up and really helped us out. We were had no funds. They came in and we thank you for taking those trailers out, coming in, repaving the parking lots and making that school within a matter of weeks ready for us to, when those kids came in, have beautiful paved parking lots and the old trailers gone. Other shared service like bulk buying so we could both save money. So we appreciate, there's already some foundation laid for us to work together with you guys. We appreciate what you've all done already. And I, I also, like everyone else, thank you, for, thank you for being here tonight and really look forward for us to work together. How do you know I want to say anything? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, yes, I do. I do want to say something that's important. I want to uh, touch on something because I know some city council members have mentioned this before um, in some of their comments about the, this perception about n people not caring on the council. And I know everyone in this room cares, okay? That's something that I'm excited to work with you guys about, the caring level, getting this meeting. I am so proud of my president, Ali, for making this happen. He is a very transparent person. He is a very communicative person. And right now, that's what we need between our two governing bodies, right? But what I really want to do is I want to make sure that the care that everyone has in this room is transferred to outside this room, because that's really what we need to do, right? And that's working with people, other leaders. You guys have all touched on it. There will be that opportunity later. But as long as we have this strong nucleus now formed about what it is that we want to do, I'm proud of everyone in this room. I'm excited to work with everyone in this room. And I'm looking forward to working with everyone in this room. Thank you all. Yeah, um, again, real appreciative that uh, folks were able to come together today for this historic moment because, as we all know, it's not easy to get both four bodies in one room and to agree to just talk, not let alone come up with principles. So um, I think it was a positive first step, but uh, as Rich stated, um, oftentimes it's not the start, it's just keeping the momentum. And I think one of the ways we keep the momentum is we approach this process going forward the way we approached today, which was a blank canvas and a blank set and folks coming with open minds and uh, innovative ideas and just understand we're here to work together and I'm looking forward to that. So thanks again for coming and I appreciate the moment. Yeah, I'm just going to wrap up uh, what my board trustees said. Um, again, we're very appreciative for everyone here. I just, I will, I will make a suggestion for our next meeting. Uh, I think we should go to a school. You know, we're, we're happy to facilitate happy, having that happen. You know, just so we have more space so there's more people in the public um, that can come to our meeting as well if they'd like to attend in person. You know, we're happy to facilitate that and, 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 and move forward in that process. Um, the only request, I guess, from the board's perspective is at your next meeting, um, you know, to establish whether it's gonna be April 27th or May 5th. Oh, you wanna just, okay. So, okay, so, if, uh, so if board trustees, if we can look to see on April 27th or May, Wednesday, May 5th, a meeting date for our next uh, collaborative meeting. Uh, um, having an open, having open with COVID, uh, you know, uh, is it a wise move to have it in the school right now? Uh, wait a couple of months and just. We can do that as well. I mean, it's. Gina, like, I wish Gina was here because I know Gina for a long time too. And I, I share her concerns. You know, she hasn't been. Uh, so uh, I think it's better off for another month or so having her here amongst ourselves and then putting it on the TV. So, so again, this, the dates for the next meeting are Tuesday, April 27th, or Wednesday, May 5th. To the chair. Yes. <laughs> Cinco de Mayo. Okay. Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> okay. There's a couple well, great places uh, along Westside Avenue we could go to for Cinco de Mayo. Uh, yeah. well,
I, I, if possible, I would, I would prefer the May 5th date because we have we have council that week of this 27th, which means we have the, the Monday caucus and then the Wednesday council. If we have to do it on the 27th, we can make it work, but just a, just a preference for the So, so we will, I'm okay with the May so 5th meeting. It's a Tuesday the I'm just gonna, Wednesday I'm just gonna make a point of, uh, a point to note for the board trustees as well as for the city council. On May 3rd, the board of education will be having their public hearing for their budget. This is our second public hearing. So, you know, as we think about subcommittees and, you know, actual actionable steps, May 3rd, we will have a public hearing on our budget. And so, you know, the timeline um, of May 5th, I mean, I'm hoping that we can actually come with real actionable things we can do that date because that'll be reflected in our budget that will be voted on on May 10th. What about, oh guys, what about May 4th? What about May 4th? May 4th? May 4th? Does it work? All right, May 4th. All right. So the board can't take formal action on it, but in our next board meeting, we'll take action to vote on that. Uh, but if the city council can also take action, you know, whenever, whenever possible to vote on having that meeting. Uh, here. Here. So, so again, we the- should, We should confirm with the- county that this right. space is available. I think the Julieta is still here so we can check the calendar before we leave. Okay. Again, what the, uh, and at this time again, uh, I think I want to thank the council colleagues. Uh, the Board of Education will be doing conducting public comment. So there's a couple people we have to call. Uh, the council members, I mean, you guys are feel free to, to stay or to leave. Um, but uh, Board trustees, I, I still need you guys to stay. We still need to maintain. We stay. We, stay. we, we need to maintain a quorum. We don't, we don't. How many callers do we have? We have five callers. Oh, oh okay. Five callers. <laughs> hey. No, I do not take it from him. <laughs> let's take. Let's take. Let's take you have lunch money. Yeah. <laughs> The board will take a brief five minute recess. The board will take a five, brief five minute recess. All right, good evening, Jersey City. Welcome back to our March 31st special meeting. Um, can we have a roll call, please? Uh, Trustee Velasquez. Here. Trustee Roman. Here. Trustee Lyons. Here. Trustee Hamilton. Here. Vice President Shaw. Here. President Ali. Present. Trustee Richardson is not here. Trustee Vitabello is not here. Trustee Terrell Page is not here. Okay, we have a quorum. Okay, moving forward, we will be moving on to the public speaking session of our meeting. Through the chair, can I ask that we introduce the board members that are here also? Yes, um, Councilman Lavaro. Council. Hello. <laughs> uh, uh, Councilman Prince Eri. Present. Uh, Councilman, Sa uh, Councilman Saleh. Here. Okay. All right, um, again, thank you guys for reconvening this meeting. Uh, again, just to be in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, we will be having a public speaking portion of our meeting. We have five speakers this evening. I'll be reading the statement for public speaking. Um, okay, all speakers must adhere to the five minute speaking rule. The clock shall not be stopped. Speakers will be called to the microphone to speak in the order that the request is received. Pursuant to board policy 9322.2, public participation at board meetings, request to speak may be made up to 4 p.m. on the day of the board meeting by calling to request to the office of the secretary of the board or by emailing boarddocs at jcboe.org. Please provide your name, phone number, and the date of the meeting. At the discretion of the president, the order of speakers may be changed. Okay, I'm calling our first speaker. I believe her name is Maria Enriquez. Someone keep a time for me. Five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. Two hours. We'll make San Antonio. <laughs> Hello? Good evening, Maria. This is Musab from the Jersey City Board of Education. You're live for public comment. You have five minutes. Oh, five minutes? Okay, thank you. You can begin. Oh, thank you. Good evening.
evening. My name is Maria Enriquez. I'm a mother of four children who all attend our authentic public schools. I'm a parent of a child with special needs, and I'm also a self-contained special ed teacher at, uh, at high, uh, Ferris High School for students 14 years old and up to, 40, uh, up to 21 years old. I would like to bring up two questions. Question one, did you know that our JC property taxes are not equitably distributed? Proof is that only 24% of property taxes go to our public schools. Not to mention the 25 to 30 year tax abatements that the city council approved again and again more than 70 times that ensures that these developers pay zero cents towards our public schools. Meanwhile, our old schools have old vent ventilation systems not designed to prevent the spread of COVID. Our schools are overcrowded and the number of students admitted to McNair is limit limited only to the number that the very old building can safely accommodate. This leads us to question two. Is everyone aware that just last week, city council approved six to one, uh, six to two with one abstaining? a 99-year ground lease of Liberty State Park for a public-private partnership that will be a county school. They also approved $2 million to be paid on an expandable cost of 2% per annum. Instead of building a new school for our McNair students and increase the number of students who can attend this highly competitive academic high school, the city council approve the construction of a new building for the students of other cities in the county and will give two million plus to it, it, it each year. What about our average B students, those who do not get, get A++ plus plus average? What about their needs to have space and resources to succeed in school? What about our special needs students who attend schools in the basement, such as in McNair Academy One and in Dickinson's case, Classes are held at the sub-basement of the school with no windows that open. How come our city council members want to give this new school only to the A++ students of other cities rather than just our students here in Jersey City? There's already a county school here in Jersey City. That $2 million per year that increases 2% per annum? Imagine what that $2 million can give us. Space and resources that should go to all our Jersey City students, regardless of, the, of their GPA. Please don't play favorites. Please give full funding to those who have very little. We have so much we can give to our English language learners, our children with special needs so that they can reach their full potential. My twins are now in middle school. They're 13 years old. They have never experienced what it's like to attend a fully funded, authentic public school. Do the right thing, Jersey City Council. Our Board of Education um, trustees, trustees have already done their part. Fully fund our public schools and give our students the resources and funding money they need to succeed. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Our next speaker is Nicole Alzamaro. Dialing her now. Hey, Nicole, this is Musab from the Jersey City Board of Education. You're live for public comment. You have five minutes. Okay. Uh, good evening. According to 2019-2020 School Year Education Law Center adequate report, uh, what, was, what was considered adequate funding for Jersey public schools would be $656,957,493. Between state and local revenue received, it was $509,204,357. That means that we're below funding by $147 million, $753,136. State aid was alone, I mean, it was above funding by $185,196,126. Local revenue was below funding by $332,854,000. $1,637. Therefore, based on the School Funding Reform Act, SFRA, 
Jersey schools is considered below funding, which means Jersey City Public Schools is unconstitutionally funded, which goes against the state Supreme Court ruling of Abbott versus Burke. Therefore, my question is, number one, if an average of 52.6% of property taxes goes to public schools funding from one property with a population of 258,523 people, and we have about 33,000 students attending our schools, why is Jersey City's local revenues funding below funding by over $300 million? And my second question, what is the council going to do to speed up the time needed to reach full funding of the required local contribution? Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Okay, our next speaker is Greta Weeder. Dialing now. You guys can hear, right? This is our system. <laughs> this is this is our system. Hello, Greta. This is Musab from the Jersey City Board of Education. You're live for public comment. You have five minutes. Hi. Um, okay. Um, I know um, a lot hasn't been mentioned about the aut autistic children, so I'm just wondering, um, you know, is there a plan for them? And um, I do apologize, my children are in the back. Um, so pretty much, I'm just wondering, like, is there a plan for them? Um, my son is autistic. He's in an autistic classroom. And, you know, I know there's going to be, like, social distancing. And my son, he, he loves his hugs. So, yeah. you know, it's a big concern about that. Yeah. Um, and yeah. especially yeah. with... Um, I'm sorry, uh, with um, the lunch, like how's the lunch going to be given and especially with um, them switching from different classes like speech and stuff like that. That's just my main concern. It's just, uh, I do apologize for that. It's okay. Um, um, that's really it. You know, it's just some concern about like how is everything going to be done for the autistic children, special needs, stuff like that. Uh, a lot of it's not being mentioned. So, you know, I would love to send my son back so they can, you know, so he can get education. Um, but that's really it. I mean, I have really no other concerns except for that. Thank you, Greta. Thank you. I, I do apologize for the noise. No, no worries. <laughs> bye bye. All right. Thank you. Bye. Okay, our next speaker is Phil Pedzruli. Calling now. Hello. Hey, Phil, this is Musab from the Jersey City Board of Education. You're live for public Hello. comment. You have five minutes. I've got five minutes now? Okay. Thank you. Uh, one of the things, uh, I want to thank uh, the Board of Education and the City Council for meeting tonight. Making this a public forum. going on here, you need to have a forum that people can really listen to and make comments on. I'm not sure people on the audience, in fact, there have been many comments saying that they cannot hear. Now, are you, can you hear me now or not? We can, we can hear you, Phil. Okay. So, you know, to me, you're asking for it. You know, my recommendation is to have another meeting at a location where you've got decent, I'm going to say, I don't know if it's Wi-Fi or internet service. So people can actually comment in here. You're asking us that, but it makes very little sense for me to comment on something when I have, when I've heard maybe one percent of what's going on here. Okay. Now on the second thing, uh, now is that something that's possible that you extend the approval for the budget meeting so I can understand what went on? Uh, Phil, the policy is not to comment during board comments. The board will respond after your, after the public is finished. Okay. Um, now, the, the second thing is, if this is the kind of format that you are presenting to the public, which we are paying our taxes on, I'm very concerned 
that our students are getting the same type of service. How do we know as a taxpayer that students are receiving decent internet service on this? To me, you know, what you present to the public that I'm part of is the same thing that you present to the students. And I'm wondering if they're really getting uh, the education that they deserve on this. Um, okay. The other thing is, is there a way to make a public vote on your budget instead of just having the board approve it and the pub it be made a public vote so that we can actually approve the budget as we see fit? Because the uh, increase seems outrageous based on what it is. And I understand the, the state has, has reduced their funding, but I understand that we're still getting more than the average city school board is getting um, for the uh, for the budget for their uh, expenses, and um, those were the main things that I wanted to say. So I want to thank you for your time and uh, making this open to all. But I just wish that you know I could hear what was really going on, so that I could comment on some of the things on that. And I will have other comments uh, later on. So thank you for for listening. Thank you, Phil. Okay. All right, calling our last speaker for this evening, Josephine Page. Thank you for calling Pinch Hitter Professional. All right, that concludes the end of public comment. Um, if there's any board comment or comment from the city council, um, you know, we can have that at this time. Otherwise, we'll make a motion to adjourn. Is there any comment? No comment? So, so we'll get the the tech team's gonna, I believe, upload this on Facebook, right? Okay. And I do just want to say the one thing that I do want to comment on is uh, the Wi-Fi issue. Obviously, in this building is is pretty pretty terrible. It's pretty horrendous. I mean, I know that we even have our own hotspots here, but. Uh, you know, that is something that I think we might want to consider when we think about our next meeting. And Yeah, I think that this is something we need to consider when we have our next meeting in terms of where we want to do it, just so that we can have better internet, internet access. And, you know, again, that's something that we have to advertise, and so we have time to, to work on that. Um, but I do want to just make that suggestion, especially for the members of the city council as well, because, you know, part of what we want to do is keep the public as engaged as possible in these meetings, and so I think that's something that we might want to look at. So I just want to share uh, very briefly from our, our technology team that the signal of our hotspot and the signal out of the Wi-Fi was not strong enough to get a consistent signal out on Facebook, but the meeting will be recorded. It will run tomorrow at 6 p.m. on channel 97 on Comcast, on channel 43 on Verizon, and also be available on demand at jcboe.org. Uh, in addition, we're gonna send a copy uh, to the city council so they can also post it um, and we'll work with the tech team to, to get that done. So with that all being said, um, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion. Motion by Vice President Shaw, second by Trustee Velasquez. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right, that concludes uh, this evening's meeting. Thank you.